Hey, today I want to show you a quick trick for working with promises in JavaScript and how you can work with them in groups to do either parallel or sequential evaluation of them. So we use promises a lot in JavaScript to deal with asynchronous network calls where we want some sort of API request to go out, for example, and we want to know when that request is complete. So promises help us model that very easily. So what I have here is a kind of make API request function that I wrote that just simulates that. It returns a promise for a request in response to a request that'll take about a second to evaluate. So I can test that out here. I'll just make the example request. We'll say our request is hello. Now, promises are eager, so when I run this call, it's gonna initiate that promise immediately and go try to make that network call. And if I wanna know when that network call is complete and I've gotten the response, I can use the dot then syntax. So I can say dot then and give it a callback function to execute with the response value. I'm just gonna use the console.log function to log out the response. Come down here to my terminal and I'll say run this file. And we'll see the request gets called out and about a second later the response comes back. So that's how you use a promise by itself to you know, make an API call and, and know when that call has come back. It's very straightforward. Where I see people sometimes getting a little bit confused is when they need to do multiple promises. So let's say I create another request. We'll make three actually here just to kind of really scale it up a bit. Now, if I want to know when each of these uh, calls uh, resolve into individually, I can just kind of copy and paste this and say, okay, show me you know, request two and request three when those are done. And that's going to work fine, except that we're going to get individual kind of callbacks for each one of these. So it doesn't it's not really telling us when all of them are done, it's just kind of individually based on each one. But what if I wanted to know the kind of result of all three of these th things happening? Like I want to assign a callback where I know that all three values have gotten, are done and I've gotten all their values. Well, one way you could do that, and this is kind of the sloppy way, would be to kind of nest them. Very ugly. So I could say, okay, we'll take this response and then uh, with that response then do request two dot then and then etc. So I can kind of like chain them together this, this kind of way. That's not really the best way to do it. Actually promises come with a function called promise.all. What promise.all does is it will take an array of promises and it'll evaluate them you know, in parallel and say when all three of these things are done then return a promise. And that a resolve a promise. And this kind of outer promise will have all of the response values in it. So what I can do is I can say, okay, take request one, take request two, take request three. And outside of this, I can say, okay, do the callback for when all three of them are complete. That's what promise.all does. It says, look at all three of these requests and only let me know when they're all done. So if I use console.log as my callback function, it'll log the response for me. And what I'll see here is that all three requests go out at the same time, but then the responses come back in an array grouped together. So this is really useful when you need to do essentially parallel processing of some sort of requests. It could be like paging data from a database. Uh, it could be uh, anything really that uses promises. This is a very easy way to do kind of parallel evaluation of promises. So promise.all, just give it an array of promises and it'll let you know when all three of those have been, or all of those that are inputted have been completed. However, sometimes we want to do things sequentially. So when we're doing promises like this, let's imagine this API request is going against the server. Uh, we don't want to overload our server with requests. Maybe we want to get all of these things completed, but we don't want, the server doesn't have to do them all at the same time. Maybe we want them sequentially, for example, to prevent us from overloading the server. So we can do that as well fairly easily with, uh, with uh, promises using the reduce operator. So I wrote about and kind of blogged about reduce in a previous, uh, previous video. Uh, reduce allows us to take an array of things and transform them into a single value, which is what we're sort of doing here. We're taking three requests and kind of turning it into one promise request with the final response. So we can do the same thing with the reduce function but make it work in sequence instead of parallel. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a little bit tricky, um, so bear with me here. First, let's go ahead and comment out the example we've built here. and Let's do the sequential promise chaining. So the first thing to keep in mind is that when you create a promise, it's going to run 
it's going to be scheduled to run immediately. So promises are eager. They don't wait for you to call dot then to be evaluated. They're just going to execute when you create them. So we don't want to create our requests out of the box. If we start creating these requests, they're just going to run regardless, and we've lost the ability to sequence them. Instead, what I'll do is I'll just kind of create the definitions for my requests. So I'll say kind of requests are going to equal this array. I want to make a request for hello, make a request for world, make a request for foo. If you're like getting data from an API, these could be like the different definitions you use to tell the database, you know, what data you need, you know, whatever the arguments are going to be for your API calls could go here. So I have the arguments. I haven't created the API calls yet because, again, I want to create them in sequence. This is where the reducer function comes into handy. So the reducer function can take an array and return a single value at the end. Like if I wanted to concatenate all of these things, and, and there are better ways to do this in JavaScript, but this is just an example. I could take the requests. And I could reduce them, and the reducer takes a reducer function, which says iterate over the array. In this case, I'm just going to start with an empty string, and I'm going to return the empty string plus whatever the current value is. And if I log the result of the sequence, it just slammed those together, right? So. That's what the reducer does, is it says go through each item and then kind of accumulate them over time based on this formula. So we can leverage the same kind of approach using uh, promises. So what I want to do is I want to say for each item in this array, I want to create an API request, so create that promise. But I don't want to create one until the previous one is completed. So if I, when I get to world here, I don't want to create the API request for world until the previous API request for hello is repeated. And I don't want to create the API request for foo until the previous API request for world is completed, etc. So I can actually do this fairly easily with a, re a reducer. What I'll start with is an empty promise. So I will create an empty promise. You can do that with resolve. I'm actually not going to make it empty. I'm going to pass it a parameter to resolve with. So I'm going to say make a promise and just put an empty array into it because I'm going to collect the responses over time, similar to how the promise.all function works. So what I'll call this, then I'm going to change this from calling it the accumulator to calling it the previous promise, just to be uh, a little more verbose, and we'll call this the current argument. Okay, so I have the previous promise and I have the current argument. So what do I want to do? What I want to do is I want to take the previous promise and say, okay, when that previous promise is done, then I want to do something else. What I want to do is I want to take the kind of accumulation, this is where the accumulation is going to happen. You're going to see we're going to pass it through the promises. I'm going to say, go ahead and make an API request with the current argument. So when this previous one is completed, then make the next one. However, I don't want to just return this because I'm going to lose this accumulator. When you return a promise within a dot then within a promise, it just kind of flattens it. So this will become the new value of the next promise. What I really want to do is take this kind of response and merge it with whatever the accumulated value is over time. So I'll take this dot then function and say, okay, calling dot then with the previous promise, here's the kind of accumulated array. We'll start off as empty. Make an API request for the current argument. We're starting with hello if you're iterating through this thing. And I can call dot then and say, kind of doing an inner dot then here so I don't lose the accumulator and say take the response from that, pro, uh, that make API call function and just add it to the accumulator. Now if I take this result, and do a dot then and log it out, you're gonna see a different, uh, different experience than we've seen before running this code. So I'm gonna call the index file you see the first request goes out, then the second, then the third, and then all three responses come back. So you see this time it was waiting for the previous response request before it was initiating the newest one. So I want to just walk you through the reducer one more time because I know it's a little bit confusing. So here's our reducer. It, it, it's expecting to pass a promise each time, so we're going to seed it with an empty promise, like kind of an empty array, because we want every promise to kind of pass on the accumulated values. So when we start for the first time, we have no accumulated values. We have no responses yet, so we have an empty array. Then in the reducer, I will have access to what was previously returned, which is always going to be a promise, and then the current argument, which is going to be uh, 
whatever argument it's at on this chain, in this array. So if I start with the first one, my previous promise is just giving me back this empty array. And my current argument is going to be hello. So if I trace this code, I have the previous promise. When that's done, it'll give me back just an empty array here. I'm going to say, whatever that argument is, doesn't matter. Whatever that response is, doesn't matter. Go ahead and make a new API request for the current argument, which is hello. But then within that, when that completes, take that response that you got back and merge it in with what was ever was accumulated by the previous promise. And this will all kind of flatten back out. So what happens is you start with nothing, you make a request for hello, and you get back and you merge nothing with hello, so that now you have hello. Then you get to world, and it says, okay, take the previous request that got completed, this will be the accumulation, so this will just have hello in it, and make the request for world. And when that response gets back, it's going to add world to that previous accumulator. So now you're going to have hello and world. And then finally, you're going to get a... Uh, a um, promise that's going to have hello and world in it and so you're going to say make a request for foo and when then when the response from the foo request comes back merge that back in with the accumulator which has hello and then world so you could put consoles in to see all that out but this is a nice trick now to do kind of uh, promises in sequence so i want to show this i think it's confusing for newcomers to promises you know they're very easy to work with individually uh, but again you can do them groups of them in parallel using promise.all or if you need to do them in sequence, so kind of one after another, but you still want to accumulate them, you can use a re uh, JavaScript reduce function to essentially programmatically chain them together.